Hey everyone, you with Tanisha Ali. Um, calling to let you know what's happening with me with my day four fast. I don't have my little journal. Thought I had it. Um, this morning was pretty rough. Between the hours of five and eight, I awakened this morning prepared to fast, fast, fast because yesterday was easy, easy, easy. I'm in ketosis. I'm not hungry. But I was feeling a little bit different than I was over the last few days. And so I checked my sugar, which you know I'm checking anyway. And my sugar levels were very low. I do have an issue periodically with hypoglycemia. It comes and goes and not that often. But considering I was going into my fourth day, I wasn't necessarily surprised. So I woke, awakened to be in 60. 60 is not the worst, although we're not really supposed to be below 70. It's not unusual every now and then I'll drop in the 60s. So at that time, I just was monitoring it and drinking more water. Um, checked my ketones, which let me know I was on the large side of ketones. I was in right above the maximum fat burning state. I was right toward the end. I was really excited about that. Not trying to do anything, but got my daughter to go downstairs, get a little orange juice, piece of cantaloupe and watermelon, and then a piece of toast with some... Um, protein some peanut butter fat and protein and then as well as a little bit of yogurt just in case so i continue to keep an eye on that over the next 40 minutes it dropped down to 55 and then it went into the 40s it went to 48 by that time i really wasn't feeling well so i said okay let me see you know what's the best way to handle this because i really don't want to stop the fast but I'm not going to jeopardize my health either. So I'm monitoring. By that time, it also checked my blood pressure, which was 95 over 78. Your blood pressure is going to be lower than normal, and so is your sugar level. Most people don't deal with hypoglycemia, so most people can do a fast like this in an uneventful way and not have any difficulties at all. But if your glycemic, if your your um, your hypo, your your uh, glucose starts to fall too low. Into the 40s and 30s, you can really you can have a seizure, you can have um, become unconscious, you can have some real challenges. And so you don't want to get it so low because it takes a few, several minutes to bring it up. So anyway, I had to bring me two little small cups of orange juice, one diluted with water. Because being that I fast three days, I didn't just want to be eating either. So I drank that, I weighed it. It went up a little bit. It went up to like 52, and then I needed to, it, it, it kind of hung out there for a while, and I really wasn't feeling any better, so I went ahead and had the cantaloupe, a little small piece of cantaloupe, a little small piece of melon, and then I also had um, a half of a piece of uh, toast with a lot of peanut butter on it and a, a small Greek yogurt, which is 15 grams of protein. I had her to make me some plain oatmeal for fiber, because I didn't want, I took a spoon or two of that. That has a lot of fiber, and when the sugar hits your bloodstream, the fiber helps to keep it up. Um, while the carbohydrates from the bread and the fruit will give me enough glucose. So, having done the Atkins diet in the past, I know that I remember him saying that um, you could cheat for an hour periodically as long as... You didn't go beyond that hour because what, what happens is your body starts to again use the carbohydrates for sugar. And once it consumes those, you can still get back into ketosis without a problem. So around 1, I monitored, uh, my, no, not 1, 12, about 12, 14, I monitored my sugar levels. And I was still in ketosis, which was good. But then around 1 o'clock, I monitored and I was totally out of ketosis. So I figured my body's digesting the carbs. My sugar level went back up to 66, and then 75, then 103, and then it dropped down to 92. The last time I checked it, it was like 92, and I'm okay with that. When I started this fast anyway, I was at 75, and it's normal for me to sort of hang around in the low 70s anyway. So what have I learned? I've learned that I started in the 70s. I was able to hang in there for three days of solid fasting and eight hours into the next morning. So we're looking at 80 hours without my sugar level getting too low. So here's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do moving forward because I really wanna continue this fast. Haven't eaten already and still being in the 90s when I checked a couple of hours ago, um, heading out to work and what I'm gonna do is continue to monitor my sugars. If this evening I'm in the 80s or the 70s, I still haven't eaten anything. I ate just those little bit of calories. 
I'm going to continue fasting, hoping that I'll go back into ketosis. In the morning when I wake up, I'll check again. If I'm okay, then that means right now my threshold is at about two to three days right now based on what my body does in terms of hypoglycemia. Now, the other thing I know is that intermittent fasting um, helps people get rid of diabetes and insulin sensitivity and resistance by day five. And it also, over the long term, can help people uh, eliminate hypoglycemia. So I did that research. So that helps me to know that over time with intermittent fasting, I can resolve this problem anyway. And then it may become a time where I can easily fast 5, 10, 15 days with no problem because I know my body was going into the intense healing. I was really excited today and I knew from yesterday I could make this fast because I was not even hungry and I did not want to eat today and currently I'm not hungry and it's been, see I stopped the last bit of food I think at 8.58 so 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 6 hours and I'm still not hungry. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Again, I monitor my blood pressure, I monitor um, my um, ketones, and I'm monitoring my sugar levels, and I'm still hydrating, and my goal is to get back into ketosis. Now, if I wake up tomorrow morning um, and my sugar is low, I'm going to eat again tomorrow morning because that will have been a 24-hour fast, and I will be into, into intermittent fasting. If I can't wait, I'd like to start my 24-hour fast if I'm going to have to end up doing that in the afternoon because typically I'm not hungry in the mornings anyway. If I started at 8 or 9 because of what happened this morning, that means I'm going to have to continue at the 8 or 9 mark gradually to continue to do 24 hours. One day, one time a day, I don't expect to be a problem. The last thing I'm going to do is stop my fast and go back to the regular situation. I need to benefit from the fast, even if it's intermittent fasting, or even if I find I can do a two-day water fast and then a regular intermittent and then a two-day water fast. So I'm in the process of studying my body now, figuring out what my limitations are and seeing um, what I can do because I really did begin to notice a difference in some things. For example, um, I comb my tongue every morning to get that stuff off. I've been doing that for a few years. That has helped a lot. You can use your tongue to, to, to see what level of health you have. Even our tongues are not supposed to be swollen. Our tongue should be very thin. Uh, also, inflammation with mucus is something that I always deal with because of the inflammatory foods we eat and the fact that it causes systemic inflammation. My inflammation was really starting to subside, which is a good thing. The other good thing, which is wonderful, is as soon as I ate, I had two full bowel movements after not having a bowel movement at all, which is common when you're fasting. So that let me know that my digestion is working very well just from having fast three and a half days. My digestion has shifted because I had two good bowel movements immediately after eating, which is really, really a good sign. The other thing um, that I noticed is the inflammation in my hip that occasionally bothers me was starting to minimize until I ate the toast because you know I have a sensitivity to um oh that's probably business I'm gonna have to call them right back I have a sensitivity to uh wheat which is one of the things I'm trying to purify myself of as well as dairy which is why I didn't want to eat the wheat and the yogurt this morning but I kind of had to because eating a piece of meat as protein is only going to keep me in ketosis. When your sugar drops, you got to get the first uh, high-end glucose source that you can possibly get as quick as you can so that your sugar doesn't continue to drop. So that's my um, sharing for day four, everybody. Continue to monitor if you have um, any comments, questions, if you've experienced any of this stuff before chime in let me know what's going on with you i really really appreciate it but again one monkey don't stop no show i've got three ways i'm monitoring myself i know how i feel i'm familiar with the hypoglycemia that i deal with periodically this has been a kind of a long-standing thing off and on though it's not all the time when i did the two-day water fast some weeks ago at my daughter's graduation who by the way is now in italy by herself because her friend the meltdown went home can you imagine that she's got 27 more days in Italy, going from Rome to Tuscany to, uh, and then to Barcelona, also to Portugal, 
and Venice. It's just, oh, so that's a whole nother situation. I'm trying to consider if maybe we want to send Sophia over there. I don't know. We, we're trying to look at the situation. But anyway, back at the ranch. Uh, going to continue this, going to monitor this. If I have to shift down into an intermittent fast, I have no problems doing that. Intermittent fasting is almost as effective as water fasting, but water fasting gets you faster results. By the way, I have lost five pounds, probably two or three of them of which is water, but nonetheless I have, so I'm not trying to go back. Now, normally, funny thing is when I ate that food, I, I put back on, I, you know, the scale, the heaviness here. But that's gone, even though I'm still drinking a lot of water. So I feel like I'm going to kick back into ketosis this evening. I'm just hoping that my sugar level can maintain. Otherwise, intermittent fast, I'll continue to do that. I can definitely eat within a one-hour window, even though an intermittent fast uh, can be, you know, a 16-hour window. Um, I mean, an 8-hour window or 12-hour window. But I, can, I know that I can do that because that's easy for me. So the benefits of intermittent fasting also are far and wide, and that's becoming a more popular type of fasting for people who are easing their way into fasting and are not able to do the water fast or the dry fast. But the takeaway from all of this is three days of fasting really can be a piece of cake. Day one is not as bad as day two. Day two is your worst day. By three, you're feeling on top of the world, which would make four on up, pretty easy days if you don't have problems typically with your sugar levels. Anyway, it's Denise Ali, Butterfly Transformations. Um, comment, like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to be sharing more with you as I continue on this journey. Thank you for your time.